Wrestling fans, EPW fans, and whatever else is listening to this. My name is Anthony Walker, the H to the E to the A to the D. That's right, the head Anthony Walker. And I'm here for another EPW special, and I'm going to talk about what happened July 25th in Billingham. Now, other matches aside, I feel the need to get my stuff out the way first. Yes, I made a cameo appearance, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, we, July 25th, this year, 2014, Billingham, about a mile away from where I live, in my hometown of Millersburg. We did a good show. It was a really, really good show. Good show all around. Eventually, good turnout as well. I didn't think it was going to be a good turnout, because it was when, I, when we first went in there, there was about, I don't know, there wasn't a lot of seats that there usually was. It was just like a row of seats in in the uh, arena place, and we just went there, and there was seats going in, and, and I was a little concerned that it was going to be a good turnout, but as things progressed, and we got onto the show and everything, it was a good turnout, a good night. Everybody was up for it, everybody was pumped for it, and it was really good really good turnout as well. My situation was in the Vixen versus Max Destroyer match. Now, Max Destroyer, I don't know if she's your manager, quite frankly, I don't really care, but you had a one-on-one match with Vixen and you basically beat the hell out of her. And that's when I got involved because the minute Max Destroyer, if you look back on the video, links will be in the description on YouTube and Podomatic or wherever you can get the links, click on the link and check it out for yourselves. You know, they say, you know, if you don't believe me, they say a video is worth or a picture's worth a thousand words. He hit, he basically beat her up the whole match. You know, and Vixen took a beat, took one hell of a beat. And then he gets her in the TKO move, which is kind of like a diamond cut kind of move, which is, if you, for those of you that don't know, like a fireman's carry position, that's if you're going to do a Death Valley driver, spins her around and does a neck breaker. Kind of like an RKO kind of thing, or diamond cut, or whatever you want to call it. And I came out, you know, with my sunglasses on, pair of jeans, my shoes, and no t-shirt, and blue wrist tape around my wrist. Just want to let you know as well, I was supposed to wear an EPW t-shirt, cut off, sh- cut off, um, cut off sleeves on the shirt, but someone forgot the shirt, didn't they, Chris? Yes, you pagan. Anyway, be that as may, came out and I cost him the match. Came out to the ring apron. He looks at me. I'm, you know, saying, "Come on, come on!" And I jump up on the apron, grab hold of him, pull his neck down, like what Macho Man used to do when he used to jump over the rope and then pull your neck down. Pull his neck down on top rope, so it's close line on the top rope. He bounces back, but as I bounce back, I fell on the ground a little bit. As you look back, I kind of missed what my position. I kind of judged or underestimated my position, and I pulled back. And then Vixen gets on the top rope, does a move. One, two, three. She lo- She wins the match, and I'm still st- standing outside with my fucking glasses on and shit, with my fucking jeans on, probably looking jacked. I highly doubt that, but you know, be that as it may. And then Vixen comes round the corner. I stare at her, I spin her around, because she is hot. There's no doubt about that. She's a talented lass, and she's a beautiful lass nonetheless. And then I kissed her on the lips, not stick my tongue down her throat. I kissed her, you know, full born kiss, right smack smack bang right on the lips. I'm not going to tell you what her response was after this show, but she looked at me funny after I did it, and then I picked her up and carried her back to the locker room, smacking her backside and everything and doing all that kind of shit. I was such a bitch about that before the thing, when uh, Chris pitched that to me. I was such a bitch about that, because, I mean, what you people need to understand, or what Chris needs to understand, most of all, Chris, I know you're listening to this, is I'm a respectable guy. I'm a gentleman. I like to consider myself a fucking gentleman. This is a pipe bomb right here, right? I'm, I consider myself a gent. I'm not like the schmuck she that go down the town or go to a club, pick up a chick, you know, go home, fuck her on the night, use her as a piece of meat and then kick her to the curb the next day. No, no. All women, all ladies are supposed to be respected. At least that's how I was brought up, at least. So I kissed her on the lips, but apparently a certain somebody there, the ring announcer there, did it at an angle with her before and he shoved her tongue down her throat. Shoved his tongue down his throat, sorry. And fucking, she liked it better than that kiss. Well, Vixen, Jody, that tells me you've never been kissed by a real man before. But I won't go into any further detail the angle got over vixen like i say full credit full respect to you that little jab at you was for what you said in in training honey but i'm not going to go into that any further detail because i'm not bitter about it and i will get my payback yeah but the angle like i said jody you were a professional that night thank you for allowing me to do it because like i said i was such a bitch about that going in Uh, i really was because like i said i'm a gentleman okay i'm not sick I'm not twisted, okay? I'm a gentleman. I was based up on three... Th- I was, Well, I brought myself up on three things. Respect, credibility, and, and honour, okay? Mainly respect. Because where I'm from, respect matters. I mean, if you wanted me to shove your tongue down your throat, honey, all you had to do was ask, but you didn't. And nobody mentioned that anyway. But be that as it may. But I helped you out. By the way, Vixen, you're welcome. Because let's face it, honey, you wouldn't have won that match if it, was, if it wasn't for me, right? <laughs> but like I say, credit to you. 
you were a professional and thank you for allowing me to do it and apparently the angle got over and um, if you want to see it for yourself like I said links will be in the description on YouTube and Podomatic and everything check out find the video link but like I said she was a credit it was a credit and apparently it did get over from what I gathered when I talked to Chris about it now that wasn't the original angle we were supposed to do wasn't it Chris because the original angle that we were supposed to do but we decided to go a different direction on the way to Billingham we decided to go a different direction the original angle we were supposed to do was the, a head gimmick a Samuel Shaw if you watch for those of you that watch TNA Samuel Shaw head gimmick now the, the whole thing was I was supposed to come out and instead of me grabbing the Master Destroyer the way I did I was supposed to hit him with a head a mannequin head and he falls back takes the win loss and boom 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 you know one thing leads to another and I was supposed to come out there and have this sick thing and have Jody's face all over this head, mannequin head and I'm kissing it and shit and, and doing all that that was the creepiest fucking thing that came out of Chris's head I've, since I've been around well since I've been associated with this guy now because I wanted to do the head gimmick but I didn't want it to do it like this did I Chris this was your idea, not mine. I wanted to do the Al Snow entrance. But as I told him about the Al Snow entrance, he comes along with this gimmick thing and this angle. And thank the good Lord, he forgot the head that day. Because uh, I wasn't up for it. And then we decided to go a different angle. And that's what we got. What you see on that video is what we got on the twenty on the 25th. And like I say, credit to the Mass Destroyer. Credit as well to Vixen as well for allowing me to do that. Because like I say, I, I consider myself a gentleman. People underestimate me. And I was brought up in three things. Respect, credibility and honour, okay? I don't shove my tongue down women's throats or ladies' throats at the first chance I get. Unlike some people, I know. But anyway, but the Mass Destroyer, I take that credit back because it seems that you have a problem with from what I've heard. Well, I'll make a promo for you, and you can get it on there, but hear this right now, brother. If you want to do something about it, if you want to do something about what I did July 25th, come to Colby Neal, September 20th. And if it's okay with the boss man, Chris, I'd be more than happy to give you your opportunity to do something about it. To right the wrong that I did. Because let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, Vixen not only beat the Mass Destroyer, she beat one half of the World Tag Team Champions. Right, Mass Destroyer? And your boy wasn't around to save you, was he, Highland Fury? Eh? You can get him to be your mouthpiece, because I know you don't talk. Yeah. It seems that when the Mass Destroyer was born, he was born with a mute button. But be that as it may. Now, what match you want at this on the 20th of, sep of September should you turn up that's up to you I mean I've got no problem coming to Colby Newham on the 20th of September 2014 and basically beat up the world tag team champions of EPW I've got no problem with that and whether Vixen gets involved or not I really don't care come what may if this goes ahead and this match gets cleared by you know who I've got no problem coming to, to the 20th of September to Colby Newham's Rainbow Legend Center and sticking both my sat 15 feet so far up both your asses you don't even know what it hits you so the match is there, the offer's there, you want to do something about it, come to the 20th of September Rainbow Leisure Center's Colby Newham come there, 20th of September 2014, the offer's there, be there I'm gonna be there, whether you show up or not, well that's up to you, and yes bring Highline Fury with you because I know he's going to be a little bit pissed off about this as well. But that's then. This is now. That's up to you. The ball's in your court. I did the right thing. I did what I felt was right. I helped the girl out. I stopped the girl from getting her ass kicked even more than she was getting from a punk like you. Because let's face it, women who beat men who beat up women are punks. And you're a big tough guy. Beating up Vixen. Yeah, big tough guy. Tag team champions. You ain't the tag team champions to me, boy. You ain't the tag team champions to me, Mass Destroyer. As far as I'm concerned, you and Highland Fury are not, are not tag team champions as far as I'm concerned. You're tag team chumps. Take that any way you want. You want to do something about it? You know where to find me? I'll be there. Colby Newham. Red Bull Leisure Center. September 20th. Rest is up. Anyway, moving on from that, ladies and gentlemen. Apologies for the little rant there, but that's what I heard and everything, but it is what it is. Let's talk about the Royal Rumble. Now, I made a cameo appearance in this again, and let's just say, that although my performance was a little tainted, a little lame, I ended up, you know, moving, losing to, well, losing rather, to uh, Prince Amin. I get eliminated by Prince Amin. I think the winner of the Rumble, if I'm pretty sure, was, was Asylum. Chris Diamond, by the way, who was also wrestling that night, more in his match later on. Chris, by the way, um, apparently chopped the hell out of Vixen that night. I just hope Sharon's not listening to this, Chris. Yeah, and... Uh, Apparently she chopped the McJesus out of it. He chopped the McJesus out of her. Fucking chopped her right on chest as well. Because she came back to the locker room and called him a bastard. <laughs> Which was great. I haven't seen the chop yet, or the chop from hell. Hopefully, the uh, the, the person who's in control of the YouTube page, the YouTube, EPW YouTube page, has not edited that out like Chris asked him to. Yeah, I'm busting your balls about this, Chris. I don't give a fuck what you think, boy. You know, I don't give a monkey's ass. You know, I pipe bomb on this podcast, pal. I will bust your balls on it, baby. You can bitch and moan about it all you want. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> 
But to my little situation, I ended up getting into a match trying to save Vixen from Prince Amin. That's what I was supposed to do, apparently. But uh, Prince Amin got eliminated. Well, eliminated me, by the way. But at least this time, I went out. At least I felt in a respectable way, unlike what I did August, uh, April 19th in Colby Newham, thanks to Valcavius. Because I went out as a normal wrestler would do. You know, I got eliminated okay. When Val eliminated me, and I mentioned this on the April 19th podcast of Colby Newham, when Val eliminated me, my face bounced off the second rope. I lost my balance, bounced off the, bounced my face off the second rope, and it just looked shady. <laughs> But I went out respectable and be on the lookout as well for future podcasts, ladies and gentlemen, because Prince Amin has agreed to do an interview. And i tell you this right now, heel or not, more on Prince's match later on. He was actually in action as well later on um, against Sniper. But like I say, you couldn't meet a cooler dude. I couldn't put Prince Amin over as much as I can. I mean, you couldn't meet a cooler dude. You really couldn't. He is, you know, he really is a top guy. And it's, and it's, it's great that people, you know, EPW has people like him. You know, whether he's a heel, you know, and he's a good heel too. You know, people have them, you know, you've got to have people, guys, that you can hang about with who are, you know, who are not complete doorknobs like many others. I won't mention any names, but, you know, I think I made my vocals, I'll make my vocals clear on future podcasts. But other than that, I mean, he was just a cool dude and we were sat drinking after the match and just relaxing and that's how I like it, you know, it's, it's, it's just a cool guy. Cool thing, you know, that's how it should be. You know, you want to go there and work with people and, you know, benefit working with people to benefit EPW. That's how it should be. You know, not surrounded by egotistical doorknobs. You know, that's like it used to be before, but that's how it should be. You know, sit there and you just relax, you have fun, and you enjoy yourself. And that's what I did July 25th, man. It was great. Uh, and apparently, the whole thing got over. Apparently, uh, there was a lot of uh, good feedback from what Chris was telling me about the angle involving Vixen and everything. And, you know, it, it got over good. And if it got over with the people, and if people liked it, that's okay with me. Because, like I said, I was such a bitch about that at first. But, you know, as long as it got over, and that's all that matters, man. As long as the the shit that I do gets over with the public, whether it's good, whether it's bad, as long as people like it at the end of the day and thought it was good, I'm all about that. That works for me, and that means I've done my job. That means I can go home happy. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't want to get, I don't want to do something that's gonna fuck up or stink up the whole joint or fuck up the whole, you know, the whole content and whole, you know, respectability of what EPW is trying to bring. You know, I, the last thing I want to do is fuck up a show. You know, I want to be, if people liked it and it got over that way, that works for me. I'm happy and that makes me very, very happy when that happens. Because then, then, then again, I've done my job. But yeah, July 25th was a good show. And for the other matches that took place that night, which was Mark Anthony and the Outsider, uh, a tag team match as well, which was pretty cool. Kimbo and HD Wolf faces Davy Blade and Karate Kid, Prince Amin against The Sniper, and Mark Anthony, which was the very first match against The Outsider on the card as well. I'm going to talk about them right now, and I'll start off with the first match of the show. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll move on from my little rant here, and I'll go to what really Matt was, okay? You know, you know what I did in Billingham? Now I'm going to go through the matches, well, the other matches that took place besides the two that I got involved in. And I'm going to start with The Outsider and Mark Anthony. Yes, I made some notes, so I'm just going to go through what I got and give you my, ex well, my opinions on it, at least. Outsider versus Mark Anthony. Now, The Outsider, for me, <laughs> I sat right next to the entranceway, right next to, if you see the camera on YouTube, I'm basically off camera, because the crowd is where it is. I'm on the other side. If you're looking at it from the crowd's angle, I'm on the right hand side. I'm off camera. And I swear to you, when the outsider came out for his entrance against Mark Anthony, I looked around and I just saw this guy, you know, coming out. It was like a ninja style character. And he was just like praying like that. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> It was, like, it was like something out like the Orient Express. Remember, if you remember the Orient Express, if you're a WWF fan, that guy, you know, it was just like something out like that, but it was very strange. But hey, that's the gimmick for you. The power game victory goes to the outsider. Well, I think Mark tried to match power with the uh, with the outsider, but it didn't work because the, the, the outsider proved that he's more stronger than him. It was an even match after that. Uh, feeling out process and um, who's going to get the better of who in that chain wrestling advantage goes to mark anthony one thing's for sure mark uh, the outsider might be winning the power game so to speak but uh, mark anthony could train wrestle and can out wrestle do you the guy mark anthony gets the advantage and then the outsider goes outside being smart 
slowing the offense down. Anthony brings begins to chase rather the outsider and ends up outsmarting him. Trying to make it the oldest trick in the book, you know, the elbows and that. Was, but maintaining the advantage. Mark Anthony, I swear to God how you do this. And I talked to him about this as well at Bingham. He does old school, his version of old school. The Undertaker's old school walks across the rope and, uh, you know, covers it down. He's in control of the match, goes for a sharpshooter. I don't think anything happened after that. But the old school thing that Mark does, it's really, really impressive for someone his size. And I spoke to him about it as well during the interval. I think he wants to take it like a little bit further because as you see it, I don't think the, if you compare it to The Undertaker's, I think he walks further than The Undertaker did. Uh, I don't think The Undertaker walked that far. I don't know, I might be wrong, but I think he wants to take it that you know that one step further for what he told me but Mark just keep it as it is mate you know because it looks awesome and it looked even awesome watching it on YouTube as well from the uh, the YouTube the uh, the YouTube camp so to speak as it's as we well at least I call it anyway I don't know what the heck he was playing at but the outsider took way too much time on the outside I know he was understanding he was trying to slow it down but maybe he was playing like a chicken kind of run like a version of it and trying to get away from him and, and that but it was but it worked nonetheless the outsider then tries to outsmart Anthony I think he he grabbed out of him and pulled this at one point he pulls the the neck down like a clothesline move to get the uh, victory and nearly gets the win on him outsider controls anthony with an arm bar anthony manages to free himself from it yeah it was just as like a simple arm bar you know i'm in control i'm the ma- i'm the outsider i'm in control and then mark manages to get free but then again outsider gets control back and goes back to work on the arm so it's yeah, goes back to work on the arm and focuses his, his attentions on that. Outsider then went through a lot of near falls, then throws Anthony outside, looking for a count out win, then goes outside and puts a beat down on Anthony, you know, if he can't do. Anthony then gets control back in the ring and hits a reverse DDT. Outsider manages to counter the sharpshooter, then kicks Anthony in the leg twice to get him on the on his knees. Then Anthony falls to his knees and then uh, the outsider proceeds to spin kick him like a, does like a spin kick and nails Anthony and gets the one two three which to me I know he's an injured character and everything but I really don't think that you know that works for him I don't know that's just my opinion on it and you know I know he's a ninja character and all that and he's the, like a ninja style character and that but I just I mean I'm nothing against the guy he got the victory and good for him and everything but I just don't think that works to be honest I had to see the, the remaining the remaining uh, bit of that match because they called me back in early freaking Chris oh what are you doing I swear to god sometimes he just thinks I'm a dumbass but that's, an, that's another issue for another day I'll talk about the tag team match now uh, Kimbo and HD Wolf versus Karate Kid and Davy Blaine. The entrance happens, uh, Blaine and Kid come out to the roar of the crowd and everything. They get up on both sides of the turnbuckle and, and uh, Kimbo and Wolf sneak attack them from behind to start the match. And I'll tell you this right now, there's one thing I have to admire about uh, Blaine. He can take a beating. <laughs> oh, he can take a beating. Wolf and Kimbo using basic tactics. Yeah, once they got the sneak attack and once they got the advantage from the big, from the get-go, they just, just decided to, you know, use the basic tactic team, which is a smart thing to do. Karate Kid uh, gets tagged in, t- gets tagged in, and takes control using his quickness. And he's a quick little sucker, and uh, takes control of the match. Karate Kid hits a second rope move, move off the second rope. I believe it was a drop kick, if I remember correctly. Ref just loses complete control of this match. It's what made this match great for me, guys. I loved it. From what I saw, I absolutely loved it, and it was fast paced. It was get go, you know, intense stuff. And the referee, like I said, the referee just lost control. I mean, these guys were fighting like you know the referee wasn't there, or they couldn't give a shit to be honest, which was great. My favorite part of the match, the Tower of Doom, which for those of you that don't know, is you get the guy on the top rope. Two two people get on the top rope on the second row about to do a double suplex or at least it was on this occasion might be a different way of doing it and then one person gets underneath the g- gets underneath and power bombs the guy from underneath underneath there's like one on the bottom two in the middle or one up the top or something like that and uh, yeah it worked very well and um, after the match karate kid told me he took the he took the worst of it <laughs> He was it. He he he, he that really took the worst of it. And he still got up and still you know managed to compete for the rest of the match. He wasn't. He obviously wasn't that bad. But he was still feeling the effects of it after the match. But fair play to him for taking the uh, the worst of it, so to speak. Karate Kick then hits the switching music. Yeah, it just got out of control. And all I remember seeing was just looking up and seeing this switching music come out of nowhere. One thing led to another, and after that and everything, like I said, the whole control and uh, HD Wolf got the victory with the one two three, which was. 
like I say, it was a great, it was a good tag team match for what it was, man. Very good tag team match. And like I say, if you want to see the match itself, links will be in the description on YouTube and Podomatic and wherever else. Right? I suppose I'll go to the another match. Prince Amin versus the Sniper. Now, I'll say this right now, before the match, Prince Amin's a good heel. Um, do I want to wrestle Prince Amin? Yeah, you're damn right I do. But, uh... I've got nothing bad to say about Prince Amin. I think he's a hell of a guy. He's a, couldn't be a cuddle dude. And he'll be on the podcast, Wrestling Matters podcast, very, very soon, guys. I'm going to work an interview with him. We're going to get everything sorted out and then uh, enjoy us. And then uh, have a good time and interview as well, which is... Uh, so look, so listen out for that in the future tapes. I am so busy right now at the moment, I can't organise it. I've just found out as well that I've got three back-to-back -back matches starting the 23rd of August at the most. But so I am up to my neck in matches at the moment. So once everything dies down on that, we'll make that interview happen and I'll make it happen with him. I'll probably see him again on the uh, 20th or 21st or whatever. But we'll make it happen. We'll make arrangements and we'll make this shit happen. But other than that... Prince Amin was facing the sniper at Billingham, and the sniper looked really, really good in this match. I don't know if this, I mean, he's appeared on a few shows before, but as well, there was a few shows that I remember seeing him on, but I don't think he was known as the sniper then, if I remember correctly. But uh, this was a big, a really big deal. And it's amazing how he came out. I mean, I think he had his crew there with him, because he got a hell of a, hell of a pop, hell of a reaction. Same old stuff before the match with Prince Amin. He runs his mouth off. God damn it, the man, the character always just, goes into this 10 minute like 5 minute tirade about the fans and his opponent and whatever I mean the last time I mean the first time we did it was April 19th uh, Colby Noom show April 19th 2014 my return to EPW you know to EPW uh, but my return to the company in a way and, and I remember just sitting there trying to look forward to take notes and everything and he bored me to death and I thought I'm going to freak I'm going to the toilet so I went for a bathroom break came back and he was still in, and he was still running his mouth <laughs> uh, I don't think he's got his manager anymore now Vixen I think she's parted ways with him but uh, that's another issue quite frankly I don't know what she's playing at but that's another like I said I, I said my bit about that earlier on it was like a mic, a mic skills match at the start between the two and then I was like a pro, they were cutting promos on each other yeah Prince Amin offered him 5 I think he offered him 5k if I remember correctly he offered him 5k to walk away you know 5k or a chance to whip his ass which was which was the sniper he offered the sniper 5k or allow him a chance to whip his at least attempt to whip his ass and sniper just said i'd rather whip your ass and punch it him right in the mouth and starts the match for the size of the sniper i mean he's about the same size as me you know and his condition and everything he's got some quickness on him because he was using his quickness to control prince i mean before i mean then goes outside to goes outside the ring to slow him down but uh, sniper didn't waste no time and he took the fight outside the ring to prince i mean but uh, i mean get i mean then ended up getting an advantage i mean then was in control of the match working on the sniper you know just basically being in control and at, at that time anyway there was nothing the sniper could do to do about it Amin hits a beautiful neck breaker really beautiful neck breaker well executed sniper then gets the advantage and ends up going up to the top rope and but he ends up missing an elbow drop i mean then st it was mainly controlled match by prince Amin. he just never capitalized on it and one mistake led to another and if i remember correctly i think it was a like counter for counter prince Amin was going for like a pedigree move which was his finish uh, move. He had him in like a pedigree position and then uh, Sniper countered it and hits the uh, code breaker for the win. So all in all it was a great match. I mean like I said the Sniper looked good and uh, you did a very good job of what it is and if you don't believe me guys see for yourself. Like I said links will be in the description on YouTube and that so feel free to check the match out for yourself. Now the other match was for the EPW British Heavyweight Championship and it was a no DQ match and I think it was false count anywhere too I don't know why that went it just says no DQ never said anything about false count anywhere match but hey I'm not complaining it was between the Asylum the big monster and this guy is a monster and he loves chopping me I tell you right now <laughs> And he was facing, yes, good old Chris himself. Yes, Chris Diamond. Jesus Christ. I don't know why, every time he has a match with this guy, Chris, he always tries to match power with the Asylum. <laughs> I mean, this is not the first time they've wrestled. They've had other matches as well that I've seen. I've seen quite a few other matches. And he always seems to try and match power with it. I mean, the guy doesn't learn that he's got, that he doesn't win a, ma a power game with a monster like the Asylum. Because the Asylum's a monster. He's a, I mean, I'd rather have him on my side, to be honest. But that's another issue for another day. Chris then, you know, being the experienced wrestler, takes control of the match but makes a mistake and ends up getting choke slammed by the uh, asylum and gets an, an asylum gets a near fall out of it and then chris rolls out the ring to slow him down 
Asylum makes a mistake by allowing Chris to take control of the match. I think, if I remember correctly, which I'm pretty sure he did, he went out and chased after him, but uh, again, the oldest trick in the book, ladies and gentlemen. Chris then hit his trademark leg drop off the top rope to get a near fall. I gotta give the devil his due, he executes that very, very well. Uh, then Chris ended up whipping, but he ended up trying to whip Asylum off the rope, gets reversed, and then uh, Chris then falls right into a fall away slam by the Asylum, and the Asylum gets a near fall on that. Chris then throws Asylum outside, hits him with a chair shot. Chris tries to use the chair and hits, to, uh, tries to use the chair to his advantage, but it backfires on him. Yeah, Chris got back in the ring, wedges the chair between the top and middle turnbuckle, and tries to use it to his advantage on the Asylum, but uh, it backfired on him because. Um, the Asylum whipped him into the rope. Well, whipped him into the chair, so to speak. And, well, you can guess who won that one. Asylum then gets the chair, puts it in the middle, and body slams Chris on the chair, and then delivers a splash to get the near fall, which was a two count. Asylum uses the chair to his advantage, but Chris uses dirty tactics to get back into the match. Chris then body slams Asylum on at the hard floor. Yes, Chris threw him out the ring. Body slams him on the floor and takes full control till he gets reversed into the ring post and then the asylum gets a near fall yeah apparently no one told me or no one said the rules that this was a forest count anywhere match, anywhere match so they obviously forgot about that bit but hey whatever asylum misses the air but Elbow from the top rope. Chris knocks out the Asylum with a chair, but the monster wakes up. He just sat up like Kane or The Undertaker. And Asylum takes control of the match, takes control of Chris, whips him to the ropes, and then hits him with his black hole slap to get the 1, 2, 3 and retain the British Heavyweight Championship belt. Now, I've made it crystal clear to Chris that I want a crack at that British Heavyweight Championship belt somewhere down the road, okay? I'll get it on my terms. I want to earn the shot first. But, Chris, I'll be letting you know I want a piece of that title because I, I believe that I can be a hell of a champion and trust me I will take my title reign if I get that shot and get that opportunity to be the EPW British Heavyweight Champion believe you me I'll either be the best champion you'll ever have or the fightingest champion you ever have or I'll die trying but be that as it may ladies and gentlemen that is the end of this EPW Billingham special uh, for the Wrestling Matters podcast hope you've enjoyed it also check out uh, EPW coming soon well coming at the end of the month they've got a show in Darlington and on the on the 21st hope you all made it for that and hope you enjoyed that as well they've got one coming in Croydon on the, in London on the 29th they're in Newton Aircliffe on the 30th and they're in Hartlepool on the 31st the most guaranteed place you're going to see the head Anthony Walker the age of the 88 of the day the next time you probably see him at an EPW event because I'm so up to my neck at work at right now with the Mills, with Millsborough Football Club I think the next time you will guarantee be guaranteed to see me at an EPW event will be in Colby Newham on the 20th of September September. Will I be in Redka? Well, that would be a different matter, to be honest with you. I may be in Redka, I may not be in Redka, it depends. But I'm definitely going to be at Colby Newham, whatever the heck I'm doing. I think I may be in a match at Colby Newham, because as you heard earlier on, I ca- I'm basically called out the Master Destroyer. Like I say, Master Destroyer, if you want to do something about it, speak to Chris, come get some. And bring your tag partner with you too. I got no problem with. I got no problem coming to, co- coming to Colby Newman, kicking both your asses. Anytime, anywhere, any place. I'm not afraid of anybody. It's simple. It's like JBL once said, "Yum yum, come get you some." But that'll be then. This will be now. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you've enjoyed this special edition of the podcast. I'm the head Anthony Walker. Thank you so much. Keep supporting the Wrestling Matters podcast. Vicky Earls will be coming on the show August 25th. So make sure you look out for that. Also, more than likely, it'll be James Powers as well. Will be joining her. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, and I bid you a good night. Thank you. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change! Are you ready? It is Sunday, and you're listening to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. And give me a hell yeah! And get some mad! Oh yeah! With Kenny Killer. Hey yo! We're in the big, big tonight, baby! And we are live! I'm the Gaudem Sugar Shoe. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Cause that's the bottom line. The stone no sets up. Download the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast now at iTunes.